Okay, I'm standing in Christina's uh, uncle's garden, and he luckily enough said, we have tons of barn swallows here. I mean, our search has been quite fruitless up until now. I've accidentally misidentified nests for house martins, which is another type of swallow. So just above me are some barn swallows and their nests. I'm a house martin, you mug. But, according to Christina's uncle, there's an easy way of telling the difference between a house martin nest and your barn swallow nests. Now the barn swallow leaves a much larger gap on the rim, so the entry and exit is much larger. Whereas your house martin, another type of swallow, you'll see that their entrance is tiny compared to the barn swallow, and it's much harder to see in there. So in Estonian they're called Suitu Barsuke, but they're the national animal of Estonia. The barn swallow resonates strongly with Estonians, and its symbolic silhouettes can be seen throughout Estonia. In Wales, where I am from, the red kite is the national bird, and its silhouette is used as a symbol of the county Powys. Now these barn swallows migrate all the way from Africa to get here, and there are actually six subspecies of barn swallow, all that fly south and all do their breeding here in the northern hemisphere. And these six subspecies all differ slightly. Some are different colours, some have longer streamers, go to the tail feathers you might call them. They're often called streamers. The ones that we have, Herundo rustica, the barn swallow, they're quite long and they have a white chest. But if you look at the other subspecies, most of them have shorter streamers and a, a deeper red chest. The way that barn swallows pick their mates is based on how they look and for a barn swallow having a long tail is very very important but also it's important to have white spots on your tail feathers. The white feathers contain no melanin. Melanin makes the feather stronger but without melanin they're weaker and what can happen is mites can feed on those feathers more easily and therefore you start having a really weak and diseased looking bird. If you're a male barn swallow with long tail feathers because apparently having longer tail feathers means less mites and general fitness and you have large white feathers meaning I have no mites and I'm able to maintain these beautiful white feathers I'm a very healthy candidate for mating with. Now one study to prove how important those white feathers are on the tails they painted them in black and they wanted to see if that affected how well the males specifically and the females reproduced. Their white feathers were no longer present and they apparently suffered lower reproductive success. Barn swallows generally have their nests in barns, hence the name. And in, they've done really, really well off human structures. But that means it's very dark in there. So having those white feathers for the male may help show its silhouette as well. Because they can look at me, I've got these white feathers. The other subspecies look for different things. And there's this theory that maybe sexual selection leads to an accelerated natural selection, if that makes sense. It speeds up evolution. Because not only are we selecting for fitness, but now we have fussy birds who are picking for certain features. And if these features differ enough, for example, there are some barn swallows subspecies that prefer the red chest, that they're going to have redder and redder chests and become more and more genetically different until eventually they're no longer a subspecies because barn swallow subspecies can still interbreed and have children. And we believe actually there's an in, there is actually a subspecies flying amongst us today, amongst this uh, population or small population on this farm because um, one of them has a quite a significantly redder chest than the rest of them. The others are bright white. Now they will interbreed, so that means they're just subspecies. But if they get genetically different enough and they can no longer interbreed, we call this a speciation event. Now these don't happen in our lifetimes, but these happen over thousands of years and even hundreds of thousands of years. So it's not something that we can witness like it just happens like at a click of a finger but maybe we're seeing the slow, gradual speciation event as these different subspecies geographically separate from themselves and select for different traits. Now some subspecies are very lazy. This Herundo rustica species, you notice I've added an extra name to it, that means it's a subspecies of that area. So the Savigny, that one is very lazy, it doesn't leave the Nile River. And the other one, the Transvista, or Transvistia, I think I'm saying that correctly, that one hangs about Lebanon, uh, Jordan, Israel, sometimes goes to East uh, Africa to migrate. Some subspecies of barn swallow migrate tens of thousands of miles and some not at all. So when they migrate back from the south back to the northern hemisphere, you might think, well, where do they go? Well, they always go back to the same place roughly. And what this means is, is that sometimes they can reuse the nests. It's not always the case because other birds will end up hijacking them. But if it's the case that there's no mite infestations or anything else like that, they'll return to the nest 
and fill them with new feathers and new uh, sticks and whatnot to redo the nest. And also, of course, they'll redo the rim. Now, barn swallows are insectivores, meaning they basically eat insects, but they're special because they feed on the fly. What's interesting is the house martin and the swallow, these are all the same group. But a lot of people, including myself before I made this video, mistakenly thought that swifts and swallows were closely related. When actually that's not the case. They belong to completely different groups. Swallow, they belong to the, the songbirds, the passerines. And the swifts, they belong to the apidae, meaning no legs or weak legs. They, they don't basically, they can't walk or run on them. Whereas barn swallows, if forced to, can walk or run on their legs. So they're not really that closely related, but they've both evolved the same physiological features. And we call this convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is when two species who share no real close common ancestor evolve to have the same physiological features. Take the shark and the dolphin, both streamlined, adapted for the water, but one's a mammal and one is a fish. They don't share closely related common ancestors. And that's exactly the same thing that's happened to the barn swallow and the swift. There's been a selection pressure for them to hunt insects on the fly, and they've both been heavily adapted for that and they're successful because of it because if you look at the barn swallow they're widespread as is the swift in fact we found more swifts in this country than sets so i have to include this example of convergent evolution here we have a moth and it's called the narrow bordered bee hawk moth it's evolved to mimic a bumblebee now the reason why it looks like a bumblebee is because it's advantageous for it to be like this mimicry is a classic example of convergent evolution now predators such as the barn swallow avoid eating bees and wasps because they don't want to get stung and it's that coloration that helps to warn them not to eat them so if a barn swallow comes across this moth it's less likely to try and eat it because it looks something like a bumblebee the natural selection is not random nature forces form with them. So you keep them in the middle of the camera, it looks sick. Oh yeah, yes, 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 Ellis, yes!